why is it not possible to get a right budget uh, in these kind of projects so we'll look at uh, this now person in the picture is yeah ben flyberg we spoke about him he is uh, we can call the father of mega project management he is a faculty with the university of oxford he uh, postulated why there are cost overruns in these projects so first um, there is an optimism bias so people who uh, during the bidding stages or tendering stages they are quite uh, optimistic about the cost so if they feel that uh, this project can be done in a span of 2 years they say that 2 years is the benchmark so we can um, they are quite optimistic that the project can be done if so if there is a, even a minor chance that um, so this goes back to the prospect theory so people like certainty people like to be uh, risk risk taking in certain cases so, so they uh, say that if this project can be done in 2 years they are very optimistic and this is this may be quite wrong because uh, if usain bolt is able to run 100 meters in seconds that's the benchmark which he can set but is the same benchmark applicable to us that's the question so is it any is there any point in being optimistic uh, and setting 9 or 10 seconds as the benchmark this was the first argument because the benchmark was wrong um this these kind of projects get into cost overruns and in the second case so second reason he tells that there is purposeful deception so he says that uh, people strategically misrepresent the cost uh, people know the actual cost this project uh, would not be sanctioned so assume that you are going to build a flyover assume that um, the actual cost is 200 crores but if it is 200 crores mla or the minister he is going to tell that no i don't have such a kind of a budget for this year maybe next year so what normally people do is they'll uh, underrepresent the budgets this is strategic misrepresentation so this is a mal practice or false uh, practice which is happening right now um, there is another kind of argument to this so they said this is the way projects happen this is how this is the way mega projects are developed if you don't uh, underestimate or undercode this is the called the principle of hiding hand then you can't uh, develop mega projects at all so in the case of the sydney opera house that's quite famous right but the cost overruns was too much the architect was completely banished from this project he was a great architect quite talented architect but he lost all the business that's the power of uh, these mega projects and now finally it's a great masterpiece right? now people are not uh, bothered about the cost overruns that were incurred so this is another argument, argument saying that if you know the actual cost you wouldn't develop these projects that strategic misrepresentation and flyberg also tells the third reason there is a mindless pursuit of aesthetic technical and economic mm-hmm. sublimes so aesthetic sublimes are uh, so the architects if you see them so they derive great joys in building fantastic marvelous structures and when you see engineer they derive great joys in building taller faster larger structures so before burj khalifa was built you can see the tallest building in 2000s was the empire state building and in 2000 every year it changed it kept changing and even now somebody is building something to you know some uh, a building which is taller than burj khalifa so there is a mindless pursuit of technical sublimes engineers like to build these taller faster larger things and there are economic sublimes the economists if you take them they like to see large projects coming from large benefits coming from large projects and there is another sublime as well the politicians they like cutting ribbons for huge projects so because of all these reasons mega projects are come into it this then there is a lot of cost overruns so the benchmark uh, which they set for these projects is wrong and uh, that's why there are cost overruns in these projects that's the argument which he made ben flyberg so the person in this picture is nuno gill professor nuno gill works with the university of manchester he is with the manchester business school and he has another perspective so he says that while 
these issues of optimism bias or strategic misrepresentation or sublime these may be going on on the one end one end on the other end he says that promoters conceptualize projects with very minimal information and various stakeholders enter at various stages of the project they influence the design a lot of design changes new information comes in by virtue of which uh, the project costs increase so and it is impossible to have all the stakeholders up front in these uh, projects so uh, the estimate is quite uh, smaller or uh, it's not as it should have been but that is just to get the ball started so he says it is very unfair to uh, gauge a mega project by just using their initial cost and this is very wrong to be harsh to a mega project saying that there there are this much is the cost over and these projects so he speaks from a practice perspective so the detailed project report which is prepared for these projects so it is very very optimistic when you look at the chennai metro so they phase 2 they prepared the detailed project report and they uh, said that this much would be the number of phpdt that's the number of people traveling in direction for so they uh, said that this much traffic is projected but what they ignored is that 70% of the people in chennai already are using public transport in, uh, not right now because of covid but before that so they are assuming that all the people who are traveling who are making these trips are potential customers and they are just paying the project even their costs so they are assuming that they can build this many kilometers in this much cost they are not doing any kind of sensitivity analysis so what 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 will happen if the traffic reduces or what will happen if the cost increases will the project still be viable so there is no answer to that they make uh, many arbitrary comments that 10 uh, 40% of the revenue will come from non fare box sources that is gross overestimation actual in practice only 10% is coming from non fare box sources so fare box sources is the fare uh, the revenue from fare and non fare box sources are the revenue from others like parking or rental or advertisements all these things so but in these projects no no gill says that the dpr is just meant to get the ball rolling on these projects and there are socio technical challenges these are not just technical challenges these are socio technical challenges for instance when you are going to finalize a station location for this particular uh, say uh, a metro rail project so you will see that where is the catchment area and uh, you will finalize uh, the station location but there may be other social factors so what is the guarantee that all these people will come to this particular station there may be other social illegal uh, interferences for them on their way to the station in the normal uh, flow of events is you plan for the project and there is a financial pressure and then you go for the design but uh, political parties they can come in so they can put in their own preferences so it is not this cycle of plan financial pressure and design may not work so uh, seamlessly how are mega projects different so mega projects are one off so there is no incentive for anybody to cooperate here because there is no shadow of the future and mega projects are characterized by open and closed structures so they are open because you don't have definite boundaries there are many stakeholders uh, with whom the mega project promoters don't have a contract with till they are a party to a mega project and they are closed structures in a way that you need to procure materials from the like in the market in so in these cases so no no will says that there is a design structure on the one hand and there is a task structure or the social structure we can say so the design structure is nothing but the list of activities or components involved in a mega project or in the design of the mega project the task structure or the social structure is the list uh, corresponding list of the people who are required to information so that this design can be achieved so we can see a chicken and egg situation here so without the full design structure we can't map who are the stakeholders on the other hand without the stakeholders we don't have 
necessary information to complete the design structure so we we see a chicken and egg and egg situation here so design structure and the task structure the design structure cannot be completed without the task structure and task structure cannot be completed without the design structure so this is a huge paradox mega project so we'll take a small example assume that this uh, this is a an a part of alignment of metro rail this is station 1 and this is station 2 you need to connect both these stations so this is the design structure the normal flow of events is you do the dpr uh, then you do the design so according to the design you acquire land and then uh, you build the viaduct or the tunnel then you put in the tracks and once the tracks are put the rolling stocks that is the train they are put on the tracks so this is the design structure and the ideal task structure what do you expect so uh, the promoter is there he appoints a consultant who prepares the design and all these things and then you go for uh, land acquisition you need the land acquisition official then the viaduct contractor comes in and then the track contractor comes in the rolling stock supplier then comes in picture but what really happens is land acquisition official he is going to come and say the particular land here is not available he is going to then say that land is available here so you need to change your alignment here the consultant says okay we can change that remember that in the original plan the rolling stock supplier comes last because he needs to just put on the rolling stocks he has no role to play in all these things but that's the perceived knowledge people don't anticipate these kind of complications so now it's a very curved track during the rolling stock supplier is going to tell that no my train can't bend this much and the wider contractor will be comfortable in building anything so if you give a design he'll build similarly the track contractor you want to bend him bend this much he'll easily do it so because these guys will construct and then leave ultimately is the rolling stock supplier you are going to ask him if the train is going to not bend it is going to make a lot of noise you see in the when you are traveling in the metro the curves the train make a lot of noise very screeching noise so that's because their wheels are bogy bogy they get eroded in the curvy area so you can't bend over this much and the speed there are speed limitations otherwise the and the trains will flip over so we can see that the normally assumed hierarchy was initially the rolling stock was at the last he was assumed to be the least powerful stakeholder or the least important stakeholder but he is becoming the most important stakeholder and what you can also see is then the traffic police suddenly will come new player will come he is going to say that no you are free to do this but if you are going to do this no i need to do this this road needs to be made one way and all these things a lot of complications new stakeholders will come in the task the task structure or the social structure is going to change so these kind of complications happen mega projects so this is um, the cost growth chart of the london olympics uh, in this particular project uh, we can start uh, so we can the blue line is the cost uh, budget or the cost growth in this project you can see that initially the cost projected cost so we see that on uh, the social structure gradually grows as the number of stakeholders keep increasing the cost kept increasing because new information came in cost kept increasing so those who have read the case uh, relate to this so they can relate so there is a particular instance so this olympic stadium uh, which was the athletic stadium was later planned to be converted to football stadium so i think manchester united was the team or i don't know i'm not quite sure about the team they were not considered because so they they had to be consulted they were the agency that was going to take over the stadium after game was conducted now after all uh, the project and seating and all was done they came in and told no for football match you can't have this kind of a seating this kind of seating is suitable for an athletic match but football match you need a different kind of seating so that led to a lot of cost overruns so, so this information that came in late and that led to cost overruns on the other hand the olympics committee of london also it is impossible for them to put in a very detailed effort at this point of time so because of this they are also quite hesitant to put all the detailed efforts 
and olympics organizing committee of uh, this london olympics they can prepare estimates for uh, stadium and all these things but it's not only just stadium so the roads need to be wider you need to build new hotels or new flyovers all these things are there maybe you need to expand your metro rail network so they did not estimate all these costs at this point of time but then when a lot of uh, city administration all these people transportation department and all they came into play they said no the cost is going to increase uh, we need wider roads we need to build a lot of hotels we need to build a lot of flyovers so the cost increase so this information came in late in the project what should be done is that there is a hierarchy of design decisions a talented uh, mega project uh promoter needs to understand how is the hierarchy a talented promoter would have realized that this rolling stock supplier is quite important and he needs to be kept in the core group while taking decisions where other stakeholders like wired act contractor they can be kept out of the loop as well because whatever you say he is going to do he is not bother, bothered about whether your material is going to work or not there is a core group the moral of the story is there's a core group and there are other people uh in the periphery you need to figure out who needs to be in the core and who needs to be uh in the periphery so whoever is in the core you need to bring them in advance so in the football stadium case uh, you should have brought that uh, manchester united or the football club much earlier in the project you shouldn't have kept them in the periphery if they were in the core this cost over and so you could have provided a very realistic estimate uh promoters are a part of central core and they decide who needs to be at the core and who needs to be at the territory and they control the sequence so you need to uh, make sure that you don't ignore the right people at the right time governance is policy it is not very hierarchy it is an open network many stakeholders here uh, don't have any contract the mega project promoters you need to uh, formulate a policy and create governance so it's not the governance should not be unilateral it cannot be governed by fiat and you need to bring in actors as the design develops and you need to uh, so these are the recommendations from the paper so you need to uh, build adequate time and cost overruns in these projects you need to also do flexible future proof designs uh, but this is going to be quite costly so modular designs or designs that can that is quite costly to do you can employ nested umpires to dissolve, dissolve disputes these empires can uh, resolve dispute between between multiple stakeholders because in that a lot of stakeholders are there they can be helpful in resolving disputes and there are obvious risks so getting too many actors in too early so this concept is there in uk or us so you need to have a democratic process you need to involve everyone to know no bill speaks about this whether he speaks whether the same model will be applicable in all cases like the olympics or in developing countries where you can't afford to have such a kind of a democracy it is good to have a democracy but if you have too many players up front your decision making is going to get hampered you won't be able to make decisions at all you will have a very extended plan stage if you get important actors like the football club in very late then it's going to be a problem and you need to uh, respond uh, ad- adequately to the time pressures and many uncertainties can affect the project